Have you ever wondered what kings and queens did in the bedroom during their free time? When they weren't preoccupied with one of their odd royal obsessions, that is. Well, stop wondering since some of these monarchs engaged in strange intimate behaviors in the seclusion of their own residences. One would believe that some of these kings and queens were simply bored, despite the fact that there are a variety of reasons why people develop a certain item they prefer in the bedroom. After all, what else is there to do for fun if you have all the money and power in the world? Here are some of the most bizarre royal intimate habits recorded in history, some of the things they did are jaw-dropping. Be warned. Herod the Great got intimate with his dead wife in honey. Herod was a legendary character in ancient times, yet few people grasp the extent of his troubles. Although he was married into the Hasmonean, Maccabee family, which dominated the region, and had a wife named Marianne, he was not a native Judean or a king. Marianne was a stunning woman who frequently made Herod envious. King Herod killed all he saw as a threat, his wife's beauty was a threat to him therefore he assassinated her as a result of some plotting by members of his own family and adultery. Herod the Great loved his wife Miriamne more than anything. When he had her executed for a supposed affair, his grief knew no bounds. Despite her death, it was horrifying that he couldn't let her go. According to the Talmud, Herod kept her corpse, preserved it in honey, and continued to make love to it for an entire seven years. King Edward VII made a sex chair. King Edward VII carried a variety of nicknames that reflected his personality. His family called him, Bertie, a shortened version of his first name Albert. His friends liked to call him, Tum Tum, because he was overweight, but the eldest son of Queen Victoria was more widely known as, Dirty Bertie, and, Edward the Caresser, due to his innumerable intimate dalliances and countless mistresses. Edward VII ruled England from 1901 until his death in 1910, marrying Princess Alexandra of Denmark in 1863 when she was 19 and Edward was 21. The couple went on to have six children and were said to be relatively happy but whatever happiness they might have enjoyed did nothing to stop the king from being a rampant skirt chaser. His mistresses included the beautiful actress Lily Langtree, as well as Jenny Jerome, who later became the mother of Winston Churchill. His last, official, mistress was Alice Keppel, whom he first met in 1898. On the king's deathbed in 1910 he had written instruction for his staff to make sure she was allowed to visit him. The Playboy King Edward had a sex chair, designed by the French furniture manufacturer Subrier. It allowed the king to get down with more than one woman at the same time. Looking at the chair today, it's not that simple to work out exactly how the thing functioned although we can safely assume that the king had it all sorted. When a party was held at the palace, Edward and his friends would wait until the women had retired to their bedrooms. Then, they'd wait until the lights were out, creep down the corridors looking for the woman they wanted to spend the night with and simply let themselves into the room of their choice. From the time he lost his virginity at the age of 19, King Edward was said to have laid with at least four women a week until his death at the age of 69. Nobody knows the real figure, but some historians claim the king could possibly have had between 15,000 and 18,000 women, allowing for the weeks when he was able to have intimacy with six or seven women in one week. Let's not forget the king also had his special chair, allowing for multiple women at once. For three years, Juana, the Mad, of Castile traveled with her husband's body. Juana, La Loca, or Joan the Mad, the daughter of the renowned, Catholic monarchs, Isabella and Ferdinand of Spain, not only inherited their thrones but also her family's mental health problems. Isabella, Juana's maternal grandmother, had suffered from severe depression upon her widowhood, and it looked that her granddaughter had inherited her illness. Juana wed Philip the Handsome, a notorious lecher, and his affairs drove her insane, or more insane, at any rate. Joanna suffered a full mental breakdown. Philip would repeatedly desert her as punishment for her erratic and violent behavior. She would cry herself to sleep and throw herself against the wall in despair. After one significant quarrel, Philip rode off to return to his homeland, Flanders. Joanna desperately wanted to go after her beloved husband but her mother, Queen Isabella, forbade it and had her locked up in the castle Lamota at Medina del Campo. She spent days pacing around while babbling incoherently, refusing to eat or sleep. To regain her husband's attention, she ordered her maids to mix love potions but this further drove Philip away as he considered it witchcraft, however, she remained utterly in love with him. In fact, 
A few days after the demise of her husband, she allowed his body to be buried, but only for a brief time. She had him exhumed, and when Philip's coffin was reopened, she leapt to his side and kissed his feet. From then on, Philip's corpse went with her everywhere. From 1506 until 1509, she traveled around Spain in a massive funeral procession while displaying his dead body. Until her father, Ferdinand, placed Juana in a monastery, she would not take a bath or sleep in a bed. Caligula slept with anyone and everyone including his sisters. Caligula remembered as one of history's most cruel and erratic rulers was the third emperor of the Roman Empire. He was famous for his brutal and psychopathic actions his name was enough to send chills down people's spines. Born in August AD 12 he was famous for his insane stories including having relations with his sisters, his problem with impotency, his weird desires, and many more. Succeeding the Tiberius's regime, Caligula ruled for a span of four years. But in this shorter span, he became famous for all the cruelness due to his weird desires, Caligula's ruled from March AD 37 until his death in January AD 41 where he did all the strange or unusual things. Caligula seemed to become more anxious to sleep around as his power grew. According to sources from history, Caligula had no regard for intimate purity, either his own or others, and was accused of having same-gender relations, both active and passive, with Marcus Lepidus, and various hostages. Furthermore, he threw insane parties and would transform one of his marble-floored villas into his Roman intimate party palace when he wanted to throw a party. He'd gather literally hundreds of strangers from all walks of life and lavish them with food and wine and do things with them. Professional musicians would play music in the background to get everyone in the mood, while male and female night workers mingled among the guests. Domitian abandoned his wife for his niece. The Roman Emperor Domitian was extremely troubled, that was sort of a thing with them. His illicit relationship with his little niece Julia Flavia, the child of his late brother Titus, was just one of his many transgressions. Following the supposed murder of his own wife's lover, Domitian made the decision to live with his own niece, Julia, that is to say, as husband and wife, making little effort at concealment, according to Cassius Dio, a Roman historian whose works were prone to being adorned for the purpose of aesthetics. Dio claimed that even though Domitian's true wife and he eventually reconciled, he continued to have a relationship with Julia. Another arbitrary assertion made by Domitian led to his ordering the execution of several Vestal virgins for violating their celibacy vows. To expand his harem, the Jungdu emperor would kidnap unmarried women. Jungdu, the ruler of the Ming dynasty, had three passions in life, drinking, drinking, and ladies. In his royal menagerie, he gathered exotic animals from all over the world. He also filled his harem with a large number of ladies. Everywhere he went, he would order his guards to capture women to bring back with him. When widowers and single women learned the emperor was heading to their village, they would rush to get married because it was commonly known that he liked to add additional ladies to his harem. 